Hi, and welcome to this VRAP tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how you build this crane here step by step. And I'm also going to show you how you make this nice uh, speed control here in order to actuate your joints. So let's test if that works. <laughs> let's hoist the mass up, hoist it up, checked. <laughs> move this forward with an insane speed okay it works the mass is nicely swinging <laughs> and let's see what we can do with this one see oh that's just awesome okay I'm showing you how you built the crane Okay, this is how your screen should look like when you open up VRAP. If for some reason you don't have these two bars here, so if your screen looks like this, that's totally fine. Uh, just hit this uh, robot icon and this tree-like icon and there you go. Since we are creating our own model, we don't need the model browser for this video, so just hide this one. And let's start by resizing the floor. So hit this resizable floor here, and you'll see this menu up here. Uh, let's go for 20 by 20 meters. And now it's important that you don't close this uh, customizer by clicking here, since if you do so, you'll see that this icon here disappears. And we will use this uh, to make our speed control, so we need it for later. Therefore, just click anywhere on the scene and you're fine. The, uh, the menu disappeared and you still have uh, this icon here. But first let's just create our geometric objects. So I'm gonna hit right click, add a primitive shape and here you have all the objects. If for some reason you don't have a right click, you just go to the top menu, which you unfortunately not see here, but you will see add primitive shape and here you'll see all the options. But I'm gonna use right click, add primitive shape throughout the whole video. Let's go for a cuboid which will be our base, 1.2 meters in X, 1.2 in Y and 0.3 in Z. I don't care about the material density, but here you could modify it. So let's hit enter. And there we go. Let's give this cuboid a name. So just double click here on this cuboid, remove all the characters, let's call it base. And then you need to press return or enter in order to save the name. What I'd also like to do is to move the space a little bit to the left since every newly created object will appear here in the origin. So um, it will be less confusing. So let's see how we do that. Let's go to object item shift. It will show you several options how we can translate the object. I'm going to go for translation relative to the world frame. That's okay. So the world frame, you can find it. Uh, below here and it tells us we would like to move it like in the negative uh, x direction so red stands for x so let's go for minus two meters and then you hit this x translate selection and there we are it moved it okay so let's add our next object at primitive shape cuboid this will be our tower that has 0.4 meters 0.4 and 7.7 .7. hit enter now we would like to do the same with the tower we would also like to move it uh, 2 meters to the left but also 0.3 meters uh, in Z so let's add this 0.3 meters such that it, the tower doesn't the tower and the base aren't interfering and if you want to execute all the uh, translations you've specified here just hit this button okay now we would like to see all of our objects so just click anywhere such that you have no nothing selected and then you can go over here fit to view okay now uh, let's go add primitive shape cuboid let's create the arm this has 11 meters in X 0.3 in Y, 0.3 in Z. Hit enter. Now let's perform a mouse translation. 
So let's go over here, mouse translation. And the arm is already nicely aligned in the Y direction, so we don't want to move it along Y. So just uh, deselect this, uncheck it. And w what we want to do is move it along Z and along X. So let's go. So let's see. Just can drag and drop this uh, this object. Let's place it over here. It's important that you don't have uh, any interference. That's highly not. Uh, you don't want to have it. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. That it looks. That looks okay. Let's have a little gap here. That's totally fine. Okay, let's add our next object, which will be the counterweight uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. Let's have a mouse translation again along X and Z. Let's place this object somewhere, somewhere here. Okay, right click at primitive shape cuboid. Let's create our crab 0 0.55, 0 0.35, 0 0.35. And let's only move this along the C direction, just for simplicity. Mm, okay, that's totally fine. Let's add our first cylinder, and I'm totally happy with these numbers. 0.1 meters, it's it's okay. Small cylinder here. <laughs> let's move it along Z somewhere around here, and our last object. Primitive shape, cylinder, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, yep, and this will be our mass. Let's move it up a little bit, such that it's not on the floor, okay, totally happy with that. Now let's go ahead and rename our, uh, our objects, so this was the tower, here we have the arm, This will be the counterweight. This is the crab. Um, this I'm calling the upper guide for any reason. Um, this will be the mass. Okay. Um, let's let's give these objects uh, some nice colors. So. Therefore, just click on uh, this uh, this cube here. Double click the cube, and you'll see this scene object property uh, appear. Then go to adjust color. Then we would like to choose ambient diffuse component, and let's make this base dark. So I'm gonna take out all this saturation and let's make it a little dark darker. Okay. Then you can simply select the next object. Um, let's ambient diffuse. Let's give this a little um, concrete-like looking. Okay. Just color ambient diffuse. Let's give this uh, yellow. So it's okay. Just color ambient diffuse. Okay. Let's make this crab. A little bit orange. Okay, I'm happy with this one, and let's make this red. Okay. Alrighty. Um, now here I still have a cylinder. Upper guide. Okay, I think I didn't press enter. Okay, um, as a last step, I would like to show you how this scene hierarchy works. See here, it says scene hierarchy, but we don't really have a hierarchy. It's more like a list of objects, so I'm going to show you the concept behind this. This crane here can be considered as a fixed space robot, which means that at least one part is directly attached to the ground. In our case, this is the base. You know, the base is fixed to the ground. And therefore, it's a good choice to be the root of our hierarchy. 
And now let's ask ourselves the question, what is attached to the base? It's the tower, right? So let's drag and drop the tower into the base. Now the same question, what is attached to the tower? It's the arm. So drag and drop the arm into the tower. Okay, what is attached to the arm? There are two objects. First it's the crab, drag and drop it in here. Secondly it's the counterweight. Then to the counterweight we have no attachment, so what is attached to the crab? It will be the upper guide. And finally, what is attached to the upper guide? It's the mass. Here we are, we have our scene hierarchy, right? And what have we done? Uh, let us transform, let us move the base, okay? And you'll see all the children of the base will also move. Let's undo that. Uh, the same goes for the arm. If you move the arm, all the children of the arm will move, but not the parent. Okay. And for the end of this video, I would like to show you uh, what are the dynamics of what we have done so far. And it's very easy to, to see. I like to hit this uh, real-time button to see the animation in real-time and then just simply hit play here. And you will see everything will nicely fall apart, which is totally fine. But now we have to realign every object. No, just kidding. Just hit this uh, stop button and you're right back. What have you seen? Everything was uh, falling apart. Uh, this was because we have not specified any links. Uh, all the objects are considered to be dynamic, so for example we don't want this tower to be dynamic, but per default every object is dynamic and that is why <laughs> you see this nice collapse. You can also play with the solvers, so I use the standard bullet solver, but personally I prefer the Newton solver, which you see it, it's a different result. <laughs> Okay, in the next video I will show you how you create the links, how you actuate the joint with the GUI, and it will be the last video. See you later.